From start to finish, I'm gonna show you how to work with smoke bombs, how to get this shot, and then how to take it to this final image in post editing inside of Lightroom Classic. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Hello, my friends. My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. If you know me, you know we just get straight into things. I've broken this up into five different parts. We're gonna begin with number one, which is why this location? What is the kind of reasoning behind this choice? This, by the way, is gonna be kind of a trimmed down version of this full shoot. We'll link over to it if you wanna see the entire behind the scenes. Otherwise, I wanna get you all in and out and this is gonna be kind of a quicker version of that other video. So I'm choosing this location because number one, it's safe. So we're working with smoke bombs, right? And smoke bombs, they are fireworks. I don't wanna be around any location where there's brush or anything that can catch fire. We're surrounded by concrete, but on top of that, Kiara, which we will link up, you'll see her in a lot of our videos. She's one of my friends and she models for me quite a bit. She has this cool suit, which has an edgy vibe, kind of, I don't know, it's, it's a bit formal, but strong, and it just fits this concrete look, this kind of urban vibe that we were going for. I love the symmetry and the location, so all of it sort of pieced together on top of the fact that, you know, it's close to my house. That's nice, you know? So that's why I'm choosing this spot. And when it comes to number two, well, let's go into kind of lens and composition. Well, what I'm really thinking about here is something symmetrical. So I'm placing Kiara kind of right in the center. She's covering up the middle column and then I'm kind of shooting wide. And a couple things here. One, I'm working with the Canon R5 for this entire shoot, right? I chose the 15 to 35 right off the bat for a number of things. One, it's gonna really exaggerate the lines in this scene, but it's also gonna showcase a lot of the smoke when we're working with smoke bombs. So I'm gonna see where the smoke is going and how it's pluming. And also because I have the resolution, I can have the luxury of cropping in and still having plenty of resolution from the R5 files. So I'm going 15 to 35 and I'm shooting most of these at 15 millimeters. So I'd recommend kind of a wide angle lens. When it comes to the composition, not only do we go with symmetry, but you'll notice me getting down low. And this is because again, I wanna exaggerate lines, but I also wanna give Kiara this sense of presence and dominance over the camera. It's a very strong vibe that she has, a strong outfit, a strong scene. What she's doing is kind of holding a firework and everything about this is, is strong. So by lowering the camera down, I add to that overall effect. In fact, I wonder if I showed some of the other images. If I grabbed one of these, so let's look at the final versus uh, maybe one of the other shots that was standing. You'll see exactly what I mean in terms of presence. So here's a test shot just standing, right? Notice how with that regular eye height camera angle, this scene looks entirely different. By getting down low, it lets the subject just dominate over the camera. We see the, the lines exaggerate and drop into them. That slight adjustment makes a big difference. Okay, so going back, Let's take a look at the camera settings. I'm at 1 400 f3.2 and ISO 400. I end up shifting this over to, well, let's see, how high do we actually end up going? We go to 1 1,000th f2.8 and ISO 800 when we start shooting. And the reason is, is I'd recommend when you're using smoke to kind of stick with higher shutter speeds, even if you need to raise the ISO to get to the right uh, exposure. And the reason behind that is you're going to get a lot of the detail. And when these smoke bombs go off, you'll notice that not only do you get a lot of smoke, it comes out quickly, but it'll also pop and you'll get these little kind of firework effects, these things that pop across the frame and a fast shutter speed is going to do a great job of capturing that. Whereas if you slow down the shutter speed, you're going to get a lot of motion and movement and maybe that's what you're going for. But for me, you know, I, I kind of like that faster shutter speed and freezing all the detail that the smoke bomb is going to create, right? Okay, so we've got the camera set up, we've got composition set up. This is the point where I'm actually going to bust out the smoke grenades, right? And what I like to use is, uh, I use Enola Gay, they're the WP40. They actually have a new version of this. I think they're the TP40 now, which is cool because I think Enola Gay was recognizing that everybody was using these for handheld photographs. So they said to themselves, let's make a safer version. So the TP40 is a 40 second smoke bomb that's cool to the touch, or at least a lot cooler than the old ones. Much, much safer to use. That's my favorite one. It gives you a lot of time. Um, they're, they're, you know, reliable, but they do cost money. And that means that you want to have everything else set up before you bust them out. And this is why 
we're getting everything dialed in before I'm going to walk you know, Kiara through on how to use these. Now in short, all I'm doing is having Kiara make sure that she's holding it in the right spot, pointing it away from the body. Again, we're already in a safe location. You don't wanna be around anything that can catch fire. A bit of common sense here goes a long way. The other thing is you don't want them to kind of hold it directly above their head because sometimes sparks do come out and it can land in the hair. So yeah, just kind of keep it pointed away from people, away from objects, all that kind of stuff in case, you know, any of that. Anyway, give them some guidance, show her kind of some of the movements. You can actually see me in the footage. You know, I'm doing a really nice job of like posing and demonstrating. Like, mm. And I, I think Kiara did okay on what I was trying to do. Like she might've improved on it a little bit, but I don't know, I thought I did pretty good too. But I'm giving her all the instruction needed, including on how to pull, which is straight away from the grenade. So that way, when I'm ready and in position, she can kind of know exactly what to do. And we're not going to start wasting smoke bombs trying to figure things out, right? As soon as she pulls, you'll notice I'm in position. She pulls and we start shooting. And this is where you want to be, again, you know, a camera that's going to be shooting um, faster frame rate is helpful because you do want to kind of capture these pops and the, the stuff that's going on. And I'm shooting through it, not worrying about the shot yet, not looking at the camera, just shoot through the entire sequence because you're gonna pick your favorite shot in post. So that's where we are now. We're gonna work on our favorite shot. And I have this shot set up. This would be a fantastic time. In fact, maybe you already did this, but this would be a great time if you haven't to go ahead, pause the video and download the exercise file, which will include a link to in the description of the video. Get that loaded into Lightroom Classic and let's work on this. The final image that I showed you guys at the beginning was one that I edited with uh, Visual Flow presets Crush. So that's with Crush, uh, but a lot of you aren't using Visual Flow, right? So we're gonna edit this from the ground up uh, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get there. Okay, what we're gonna start with first is I wanna get the background and everything to look the way that I want it to, okay? Uh, you, you've seen me do a lot of newer Lightroom editing videos, and this workflow is a bit different because of now of our ability to be able to select our subject. So in this scene, I didn't want to work with a flash or take anything extra, you know, just me working by myself. So I'm doing this natural light. But what I do want to do is bring her out of the shot, and I want to darken the background. And I also am thinking I'm going to probably blow out the highlights. So all of these were intentions that I had in mind. Now we're going to carry them through, right? So I'm not worried about this stuff because... I'm actually planning to basically blow it all out. What I'm gonna do is drop the exposure to a place where I like the deep darks of the uh, bridge itself. Now I'm gonna bring the highlight point up and I'm gonna let it start bleeding in underneath the bridge. In fact, I'm gonna do the same thing with the white point. And this is why I was never really worried about the vegetation or the other stuff on these sides because I know I'm just gonna blow it all out. I think it looks kind of cool, it's stylistic and the vibe and everything like that. Then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna add a little bit of black. So let's take this up to plus 10 and let's pump up a bit of shadows. And this lets us bring the exposure down to maybe like negative one, but we still get this nice dark vibe in the background. So, so far, this is the, bef nope, that's not the before, that's the final image. Let me go ahead and do this. I'm gonna create a new copy of this and I'm actually going to, uh, let's create two new copies. Let's reset this out fully. And let's just take a look so we can see each incremental adjustment. Okay, so this is fully reset now. And now you're just seeing this, this little adjustment. So we're basically blowing out the highlights. I'm also going to do this because it bothers me. Press R. Go ahead and just fix your... I try to get this as straight as possible, but, you know, there's always going to be some little bit of adjustment necessary. So go ahead and fix that little horizon line there. All right. This is looking cool but we're a long way from done, okay? What I'm gonna do now is add some more clarity to the image. This gives a lot of extra oomph to kind of everything. It's increasing mid-tone contrast. I'm also gonna bring the dehaze up a bit. This is gonna add a bit of color. We're using dehaze creatively, okay? And what I'm also gonna do is lower the contrast a little bit. We can do that in a number of ways. We can raise shadows more. Uh, we can lower contrast levels. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you get there, but I'm just reducing contrast a little. I'm also gonna take the vibrance up and I think I like this image with a bit of a, a colder vibe to it. Um, I know it deviates from my typical warm editing style, but here I feel like it, it works really nicely. What I might do though, is uh, other than allow my voice to pop and crack like I'm going through puberty, is I'm gonna go to the tone curve and I'm actually gonna pull down. See the, these bright highlights? Um, I know what a lot of you are thinking right now and then you're like, man, bright highlights, draw the eyes and pie, I don't like. Uh, 
it's probably not in that voice. It's just when I think of it, it comes in that voice. It's it's the you know typical internet critique and whatnot. So look, what we're gonna do is take some pressure away from that highlight by just bringing the clipping point down. This makes sure that anything that's above this white will basically go to a light gray. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom side, but this time mousing over that bottom end, I'm just gonna click up on the up arrows to get to a place where I like the matte finish and allowing the deep dark blacks to go to a gray. Now I'm gonna add a bit more mid-tone highlight and a bit more mid-tone shadow. So a nice little S-curve. You've seen me do this a few times probably if you've followed the channel. If not, shame on you for not following the channel. I mean, seriously. If you wanna make any other tweaks, you can actually click over to the parametric curve. And this is uh, a really great, I want you to pause and look at this actually. Look, this is not the same thing as this. This is a really great tip because a lot of us think that the parametric curve is the same thing as the point curve, but they're not, they're independent. Which means that if I wanted to make fine tuning adjustment to just the lights, I could do that here, pull the darks up a bit more, bring the highlight point up a bit more, and really make sure that those, uh, those highlights kind of fully blow out on the image, right? And that looks really cool. Now, getting into HSL, if I wanna do any color tweaking, I can. The great thing about bold colors is you can shift those colors. So look at this, I'm clicking on saturation and I can shift to teal, I can go more to purple, and I think I like this purple. This is partly because I'm slightly colorblind. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the oranges. I'm actually gonna pull these more towards the reds because uh, I, I kind of like that vibe that it's giving. It's like this orange and purple vibe, uh, which I dig. Okay, I'm also gonna pull a little bit of the saturation out in these warmer tones, not a ton, just a little to kind of give it a bit more uh, of this kind of cool feel and kind of lean, uh, I'm leaning into the colder color scheme that I'm using, right? And we could, you know, make a slight adjustment and warm up from here if we wanted to, but I still want to, I want to leave it about where it's at. This is looking fantastic. I love the way that, again, I'm focused on everything background right now, not on my subject. So now we're going to go to the next step. I'm going to go and use Lightroom's AI detection to select the subject. Keep in mind that if you have a lot of smoke covering your subject, this probably won't work all that well. But in this case, not bad, Adobe. Not bad at all. You've done well. Okay, so what I'll do again, use highlights. You've seen me do this before. When I wanna add light, I'm not just going to adding exposure because that changes everything. It changes the shadows, it changes everything. I wanna incrementally control the areas of light that I want. I'm gonna add a bit of light to the shadows. I'm also going to pull the blacks down a little to maintain contrast. Okay, now if I need a tiny bit of exposure, fine, but I really don't. I can kind of get there with just these adjustments. Maybe a little bit more on the white side. There we go. And if we want, we can also add a bit of warming. So if you want to just get her skin tone slightly more warm, I'm just going to add plus 20 on that side, maybe plus 10 on the, uh, on the reds or plus 5 on the tint right there. And we'll call it good. That looks really, really nice. We're almost there. So we've done this mask, and if I turn this on and off, look at the difference. Look at this. It's like I freaking took her into Photoshop and, and did some dodging and burning. What you might notice, though, is because there's more light coming in on the feet, the, the feet um, look like I've literally lit them up with uh, a flash. And, you know, that's not ideal. I, you've never seen me do a tutorial where I'm like, you know what, for this image, we're going to light the feet. So we don't want the feet that bright. I'm going to make a simple fix. I already have a, a, a little preset over here from the Visual Flow Retouching Toolkit. You guys have seen me do this before. It just adds a radial filter right into the center of the, uh, the image. But if we want to do it manually, uh, you know what I would suggest is that do this manually the first time, create your own preset so that we don't have to do this each and every time. But we'd go create a new mask. We're going to go to the radial gradient, drop it in right over your subject. You're going to go ahead and invert the mask by clicking right here and press I. Sorry, not I, <laughs> just kidding. Press uh, apostrophe. Or you can click in the menu and you can find it right there to invert. Okay, now from here, we can uh, actually start pulling down the exposure, okay? And now I'm just leaning into what we've created. So I'm leaning into that effect overall. And what I can also do is, is this. So look, her feet are still too intense, too, too bright, right? So I'm gonna get the background to exactly where I want it. We'll call it like, ooh, I, I don't know. The darker it goes, I just get these like vibes. You know what I mean? I like it. Okay, we'll go about right here. The rest of it, we're gonna go ahead and create a new mask and select a brush. 
and this time you're just going to paint right over the feet and if that disappears on you just click the show overlay so you don't see that overlay paint right over the feet and this go around just reduce the uh, the white point right there till you get it back to a, a good spot so right about here is good you'll notice that um it's kind of affecting a little bit of the background area there's two ways of addressing that you can either zoom in and just hold down alter option and this is probably the easiest way for now leave auto mask on when you're erasing and just simply click and drag you know right around the feet and it'll it'll catch that edge pretty nicely and if you look at the mask you know it does a pretty decent job of that you can also turn this off and refine it a bit but already it's it's good okay same thing on this side we can use it with the um you know you can use it with the auto mask or not but basically you're just subtracting it from the background we could also go and control like lumen uh, the 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 luminance masking or whatever but this is easier right so I, I like to go with like the easiest solution for each each option um, what i'm going to do is just pull down a little bit more on the highlights i want to make sure that i don't see any darkening of the background and right here i do a little bit so let's just take a look at that uh, overlay and if you want you can change the overlay to a colored overlay and then you can see it a lot better so if i hold down alter option now it's just red and i can just paint off around the foot where i don't want this to appear okay I feel like this is the simpler approach with an object that's small and just very easy to, uh, you know, the other thing about luminance masks is that they can tend to slow down your system quite a bit. That's fine right there. Um, so if I don't have to use them, uh, I'll, I'll kind of avoid it. There we go. That looks nice. I, if I do say so myself, that looks nice. We'll bring the shadows maybe a tiny bit up just so it doesn't look like the feet are getting too dark. I'm going to lower exposure as well and just, Fine tune until you get a nice little spot where it, it looks like it fits. And right about here, it's it's good. Like we're getting to a really good spot. In fact, if I were to turn that on and off, you'll see this is like, you know, Pied took a flash bulb to her feet. This is like normal, where it should be. And that's cool. So check this out. Right over here, we still see some of that gnarly green. And I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of this either, right? So what if we created a brush? And for this brush, we're actually just going to paint it in and bring the exposure up. So all I'm going to do is just blow out the areas that are not fully blown out yet. Again, a good idea when you're doing this type of a brush is uh, to turn on auto mask either when applying it or erasing it. I usually like to do it when erasing. I find it is a little more accurate. So I'm going to hold down alter option, click auto mask, and now I'm just going to paint off the edge of the, uh, the bridge. So what we're just doing on both sides is I'm going to come to the other side, do the exact same thing. We're just kind of properly blowing out those areas so we don't have any other distractions uh, in the scene okay that's it this looks freaking cool how fun is that all natural light we got it all now, if you want to do a little bit of extra stuff you could always heal out some of these things and and do whatever you want to the scene i'm going to give you guys the raw file as you have it but let's go ahead and take a look at the before versus the final after we've added light made it look super cool it kind of helps that we had kiara she's a baddie that helped a lot anyway we are going to link up everything we used in the description of the video. Be sure to check that out. You guys know how we do on YouTube. If you guys dig the content, we'd love to see you back here and you know just how to do that. Uh, there's also tons of creators that are on the channel that are doing fantastic work and uploading each day. So the notification button will actually let you know when they upload it as well. In the meantime, well, let me know what you think in the comments below. I read them. I get ideas from them. And uh, if you want to stay in touch, if you want to just follow me personally, you can find me at Pygirsa. And that is it. Hope y'all dug it. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.